Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Stonehenge has made the news a number of times in recent weeks. First, archaeologists discovered a number of deep pits arranged as an enormous circle that centred on Durrington Walls, an enormous site that's situated inside the Stonehenge landscape. Then there was the recent discovery that the altar stone of Stonehenge didn't come from Milford Haven in southwest Wales, which was long believed, but the source of this stone is likely much further east. This discovery means there is little to no evidence to say that both the altar stone and the famous blue stones were transported to the Stonehenge site by boat. And now there has been another new discovery this week and this time it's thanks to geological analysis of a sample taken from the large sarsen stones back in the 1950s. As you may or may not know, the large sarsen stones are believed to be the last monoliths to be added to the site of Stonehenge, which was once just a simple circular bank and ditch with a ring of posts on the inside edge. The sarsen stones are of course what makes Stonehenge the most famous monument in Britain, because they are the ones that are used to create the huge upright trilithons and lintels. These stones are thought to have been brought to the site around 2500 BC from a nearby area that is known as the Marlborough Downs, a 75 square mile area between 15 and 25 miles north of Stonehenge. But what scientists have discovered is the specific origins of the stone, a very small two square mile part of the Downs, which is today a patch of woodland just south of the village of Lockeridge in Wiltshire. In ancient times, and even into the modern era, this area was covered with large sarsen stones, and it is these specific boulders that are geochemically the same as those used to build Stonehenge. Archaeologist Katie Whitaker from Reading University believes that these stones were chosen because of the boulders' exceptional sizes and relative flatness, making them fit for purpose with minimal stone shaping needed. Experts have even discovered that the boulders from this part of the Marlborough Downs were also responsible for a massive local prehistoric tomb that was built around 1,200 years before Stonehenge was even built. But why has this discovery only just been made in the year 2020? Well, a sample of the sarsens has thankfully turned up unexpectedly. Back during the 1958 renovations of Stonehenge, Robert Phillips, a maintenance worker who was working to reinforce one of the upright stones with metal rods, kept one of the rock core samples for himself. He later emigrated to the United States, but has kept the samples safe for more than 60 years. On the eve of his 90th birthday, he wished for it to be returned to the UK and thankfully, this sample has significantly helped us in our understanding of the origins of Stonehenge, after the sample underwent a number of non-destructive scientific tests. So, now we know the source of the Stonehenge monoliths, experts are now turning their attention to identify the most likely route taken by the monument builders to transport the stones to the Stonehenge site. Even though the origin of the stones is relatively close by, just 15 miles away, these stones still weigh between 20 and 40 tonnes. So, transporting them was by no means a simple task. There are two likely options, an eastern route down the Wiltshire Avon Valley and a western route across the Salisbury Plain. The latter option would have involved a short segment where the people would have had to have dragged the boulders up a 14% gradient for around 300 metres. The eastern option would have involved moving the 80 or so stones for at least 6 miles along a river valley, through dense woodland and scrub, and experts think that a raft on the nearby river would have been unlikely, because, according to reports, the width of such a raft would have had to have been greater than the width of the river itself. Experts therefore think the western route is more likely, even though, as stated, this too has its problems. So, our knowledge of the Stonehenge landscape is expanding all the time, particularly in the year 2020. And, with further work, we will hopefully be able to paint a fuller picture of the Neolithic construction of Britain's most famous ancient monument. Thank you very much for watching this news update from Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.